This model of the Liebherr HS855 HD crawler crane is in the colours of Weldex. Weldex is the largest crawler crane hire company in the UK. This version of the model comes in a standard Liebherr branded box and inside there are the expanded polystyrene trays and a couple of instruction sheets. The instructions are high quality and this one covers the reeving of the luffing equipment that raises and lowers the boom. And the second one is more comprehensive and covers the assembly of the model both either as a crane or as a dragline. And the only thing really missing from these instructions is a list of parts. The trays are factory sealed and when you lift off the lid there are the boom parts and also the counterweight sections. And plenty of soft paper has been used to protect the paintwork. A bit more knife work cuts the bottom tape and when you lift off the top there's the crane itself also wrapped in nice soft paper. With the model lifted out of the tray there are various other bits of tape which have to be cut and these were there to protect the model during shipping. And this includes a slightly strange cling film type material that NZG are now putting on the tracks of crawler cranes. For the initial assembly we just rigged the crane up in a transport mode. And so to get off to a good start we'll begin with a reeving operation. And fortunately this one's not too difficult so there's no need for your friends and family to be hiding in case you erupt in frustration. The diagram is easy to follow and the usual rules apply which is to keep the thread tight at all times. And the one thing you don't want is for the thread to start bouncing off the pulleys as you proceed with the reeving. So one trick you can use is just to stick a bit of blue tack onto the pulley and that just keeps the thread there whilst you carry on reeving. There's not too many ups and downs to do before you get to put the thread through the tying off point and then you just need to tie a knot and trim off any loose end. And the final touch is just to remove all the blobs of blue tack. So the A-frame is reeved up and then you can unwind the thread using the special key. And of course you need to keep the pressure on the A-frame to keep the thread on the pulleys. And you can just keep on unwinding until the A-frame comes right down to the front. And as you can see the connections are hanging down from the end of the A-frame. And that's a handy bit of design because you can pin the end of those connections onto the top of the boom butt. And then of course the crane is able to lift it up by moving the A-frame. So that's how the crane is able to lift the first piece of boom and move about. But we're going to put this on a transporter so we'll carry on lowering the A-frame in order to minimise the headroom. And fortunately on this version of the model there was just enough thread on the winch drum to get the A-frame to lie right down horizontally. So let's whistle up a suitable transporter. And here comes a fairly heavy low loader which should be up to the task. Of course the crane would normally drive itself onto the low loader but here at Cranes Etc we've invested in a heavy loader arm to get the machine on board. And it makes a convincing load. There are plenty of boom and counterweight pieces so it's also possible to produce another loaded vehicle. So here we're using an extendable trailer and we'll just open it up a little bit. And when it looks about right we can then load it up with some of the boom sections. And at the back we can stick on the counterweight tray spreading the load over the rear wheels. With the trucks loaded you end up with an interesting display. And of course as usual the Cranes Etc team are just standing around talking. The crawler tracks have metal pads and the track frames are really nice because they've got working rollers along the bottom. And between the frames there are working jacks which can lift the crane up if the crawler tracks aren't fitted. And in fact the track frames are removable but it's not a supported feature and it takes a little work. The cab is really nice with its realistic window seals, it's got a mirror and a good interior. The body is really nice with good detail including panel handles and the Weldex graphics look great. And at the rear the counterweight pieces also look very sharp with the individual weights marked on each one. At the front there are various hoses and the fair lead arrangement for the drag line looks convincing. Up on top of the body there are some finely textured metallic walking surfaces. The boom sections are die cast metal and very straight. The steel coloured guy ropes look realistic and there are metal pulleys in the boom head. The drag line bucket is another all metal part and it's very finely made. The boom can be rigged with a lifting head and there are two hooks included and they're both nice metal parts. So before we build the crane up let's have a look at the crawler tracks and they're too stiff to roll on a smooth surface but you can roll them by hand although they are on the stiff side. 
But despite that stiffness, if you try it out on a rough surface, it's actually quite good because the tracks will roll, although you have to apply a lot of downward pressure. There is another feature on the crawler tracks which is very nice and that is that they are extendable. So they can be in a narrow configuration when the machine is transported or opened up wide for when the crane is actually working. The counterweight comes as a number of separate pieces and they do interlock but not strongly. So to avoid them falling off there's a clip arrangement provided and the clips are provided in three different lengths depending on how you want to configure the model. And you just push the clip down through the holes in the weights and that goes some way towards locking them and providing some stability. The real crane has a mechanism whereby it can lift and attach its own counterweight so you simulate that by pushing in the lifting chains onto the back and then the crane would be reversed up over the built up counterweight arrangement. The chains would then be lowered, attached and lift up the whole arrangement so we'll simulate that here with the use of a hand and it gets lifted until the two holes at the back get aligned at which point you can then put in a little steel locking pin. Of course I've just tried to simulate the attachment of the counterweight by replicating the way the crane does it. That's not the easiest way to do it in the model world though because it would be easier just to fit the base plate first and then that gives you the chance to connect up the lifting chains and actually hook them into place because as a detail it will look much better if the chains are actually attached. Onward ever onward and now we'll build up the boom. These are die cast sections so they fit together very well with only the thickness of the paint causing the bit of tightness but it's easy enough to line up the holes. The connections are made using tiny brass nuts and bolts and special tools are provided for the task and as you can see some of these parts are very small so it becomes a bit testing for those with over large fingers. With the nuts and bolts fitted in the tools it becomes an easy and straightforward job to make the connections. There's no need to over tighten the parts because when they're done up they make a very good connection. The next operation uses more small parts and that's to build up the guy ropes that hold the boom. And these are tiny steel cables with different size loops at the end and you put the little adapter through the biggest of the loops and then offer up the smaller loop and make the connection with the brass nuts and bolts again. One bit of advice is to carry out these operations over a tray or something because these small parts are easily dropped and lost. I'm going to build the crane up as a drag line so we need to install pulleys at the boom head and they just fit onto axles that slide through and then you have little clips that just lock those into place. The next operation is to fit the fair lead at the bottom of the boom. This is a ready made part and it just fits in at the bottom as shown here and in fact that connection can be pinned if you need to although on the review model it's quite stiff enough. And you complete the fitting by attaching two nuts and bolts in at the top of the fair lead, as you can see here. It's difficult to get the thread through the fair lead, so you can use the thimble that ends NZG supply and just push that little wire attachment through the fair lead in the reverse direction. And when it's fully through, you feed the thread into the end that's sticking out on the inside. Once you've got the thread fully through on the end, you can then do the magic trick of pulling out the thimble. And when you do that, it takes the thread with it, and hey presto, you've got the thread passed through the fair lead. To connect up the dragline bucket, you make one connection from the thread that's come over the boom top, and that just ties on through the eyelet over the pulley wheel. The thread from the fair lead should then be joined onto the pulling connection on the dragline, but on the review model there was a slight manufacturing error in that that connection isn't quite the right one. So the thread can't be tied properly. Now if you had this problem you could get round it by gluing the thread in. But on Cranes Etc we do not like gluing models. What don't we like? We don't like gluing models. So here's a quick workaround which is to actually screw in one of the bolts. And that just bites on the end of the thread and actually forms a tight enough connection to hold the thread in place. It's a bit clunky but it works, although I decided to go on and fix the manufacturing error. Anyway, let's test the dragline bucket and see how it works and you can see here it's being dragged in to scoop up the sand. And to empty the bucket you unwind out the fair lead and then at a certain point the bucket tips forward and discharges its load. So not a perfect test but it gives you an idea how the real bucket works. So let's go a bit retro now and replace the bucket with an old fashioned drop ball for demolition. This isn't included with the model and in fact it's just a lead fishing weight. But it looks good enough so using the controls on the crane we can wind in the fair lead, 
or unwind it and let the weight swing out. And the other thing you can do, which is probably not really proper operating procedure, is just to go wildly swinging. And of course that opens the possibility up of everyone's favourite dream, which is to have a go at knocking something down. Oh well, small things for small minds. The other option on the model is to rig it as a crane by fitting the lift head at the top. And by adding the extra boom section you get a really good looking crawler crane model. In this crane configuration it's probably much closer to the kind of things that Weldex cranes are actually used for. So let's have a final look at some of the smaller features on the model. There are nicely opening doors on both sides of the body to provide access to the winches. And a nice touch is the exhaust pipe which can be folded down for transport or raised for when it's in service. And the operator's cab can be tilted for when it's in crane mode. NZG's Liebherr 855 crane model is one of the very best crawler crane models. It's got great details and functionality, you can display it many different ways and it looks great in Weldex colours. It's just an outstanding model. Mm -hmm.